and welcome to Your Vote Counts, a public service program bringing local candidate interviews to you for the primary 2020 election. This is produced by Capital Community Television via remote technology in collaboration with the community groups of the American Association of University Women, League of Women Voters of Marion and Polk Counties, four neighborhood associations, and Salem City Club. For the nonpartisan contested races selected, all candidates were invited and all, ex all accepted. Candidates did not receive the questions, which were developed by the sponsoring groups ahead of time. The candidate has been asked to prepare a three minute opening statement telling about themselves, their qualifications, and their vision for the elected position. I'm Toma Kadu, a member of the League of Women Voters of Marion and Polk Counties, and I'd like to introduce Holly Oaks Miller, running for the office of Salem City Council Ward 5, and who will now begin with her opening statement. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am a working class grandmother who has lived in Ward 5 for 15 years. I currently teach uh, courses on climate change and environmental uh, resources uh, and sciences at Portland Community College. Uh, I am also a community organizer with Salem Democratic Socialists of America, where I serve on the steering committee uh, as their communications facilitator. Uh, I also lead the Salem DSA's Eco-Socialist Working Group and I work in uh, collaboration with other groups uh, to advocate for climate and environmental justice, racial and gender justice, healthcare for all, uh, housing and economic justice, and public education. I am running as a voice for the working class and poor people in Ward 5. I will prioritize the needs of the working class and poor people uh, who represent the majority population in Salem and in Ward 5 in all city decisions. I will advocate for strong social safety nets and a unionized working class. I will work to achieve a more equitable uh, community by reducing barriers that exclude the voices of the working class and poor from city leadership. I will advocate for transitioning city leadership from volunteer positions to li living wage union jobs. I will work to ensure this, that city processes are accessible and transparent to the community. I will work to build a community where all members have shelter and do so in a way that prioritizes the needs of individuals. I will work to implement and expand evidence-based housing justice strategies and solutions to solve our local houseless and housing justice crises. I believe that healthy ecosystems clean air, clean water, and a stable climate are basic human rights. It is our responsibility to leave a better world for future generations. And I will advocate for city policies based on sustainable and regenerative practices. I will work to implement a climate plan for Salem and help the city get on pace with the magnitude of the challenges we face uh, to avoid the worst of climate chaos. I will advocate for community preparedness for future disasters and crises at all levels. I will advocate for uh, increased public transportation, both within Salem and for those who commute to surrounding areas. I will also work to make our city more bike friendly and walkable. I will advocate for getting police out of schools, decreasing class sizes, teacher autonomy in student assessment, and teaching practices and policies that support our diverse students. Um, I have been endorsed by the Marion County Democrats, the Marion Polk Yamhill Central Labor Chapter of uh, Oregon AFL-CIO, uh, Salem Democratic Socialists of America, and our Revolution Central Willamette. Please vote for me on May 19th for City Council Ward 5. Thank you, Holly, for that information. Now let's give you an opportunity to address some questions and topics of concern to our community. Let's begin with um, uh, knowing many residents do not understand the role council persons play in our lives. Why should residents, voters, be interested in this particular race? Uh, well, city councilors uh, make 
most of the decisions that affect our uh, local communities. Um, for example, we have this ongoing uh, houseless crisis and it's the city council's choices um, that either solve the problem or push the problem around the city. Um, so I think it's important for all uh, residents of Salem to be involved in city decisions. Shouldn't be left to just a few people to make these choices. Thank you. What direction for the care of the homeless would you suggest taking into consideration, taking into consideration business concerns and public safety? Um, I think that we need to continue to uh, expand upon the evidence-based uh, solutions that have already been implemented. And then we need to um, add in uh, more solutions. So I would advocate for uh, all the solutions that are housing first, because we know that that works. Um, the evidence shows us that. Uh, we need some more uh, no barrier shelters and youth shelters in Salem. And so I would advocate for expanding um, our shelters. Um, I would also advocate for um, increase in public housing. We really don't have any public housing. Um, so I think it's important that we have some publicly owned housing um, that we can control the prices of so that we can have more places for low income and poor people to live safely in our cities. Um, I'd also advocate for zoning changes um, to allow for tiny house communities, for areas for year round um, urban camping um, and facilities for RV and car, car camping as well. And also zoning changes to allow for accessory dwellings um, on what is traditionally just single family properties. Um, I'd also advocate for um, rent control um, and in some cases rent freezes like current, our current situation I think um, demands a rent freeze and probably also demands um, that we do some amount of rent forgiveness um, for low income and poor people. Um, I would also like to see a creation of more common spaces citywide places where the community can get together without having to spend money um, to meet, to, uh, you know, share meals, um, and also to provide showers, uh, bathrooms, uh, laundry facilities for um, poor and low income people. Thank you. Uh, you spoke about climate change in your opening statement. What do you think the city should be doing to compact combat climate change? And what would you want to see in a Salem Climate Action Plan? Um, well, the city needs to have a climate plan. Um, and so the city has been working on one for a while, at least a couple of years. Um, but there seems to be no urgency in implementing one. And so I would definitely bring some urgency to that. I've been teaching about climate change um, for over a decade, um, and I realized the magnitude of the challenges we face. Um, there are many things the city could be doing to become more resilient to climate change and also to help reduce our uh, carbon footprint, um, such as integrating per permaculture practices into city planning, uh, to create food forests, um, the expansion of urban and community gardens, um, we need to preserve our old trees because we know that it's our, our old trees are much better at storing carbon than young trees are. Um, we should also be planting new trees uh, um, where we don't have any trees. Uh, we should be transitioning our communities to zero waste models so that we can reduce um, most of the waste that goes into the waste stream. Most of it should be looked at as resources. At least 90% of it is actually resources and not just garbage. Um, and I've already mentioned we need to expand public transportation. Um, we need to improve our infrastructure. Um, we'll have to move back from areas that are prone to flooding because we know that climate change is going to bring an increased um, risk of flooding to our area. And we already know that we have um, that challenge um, without climate change. Um, so those are some of the things that I would work on. Thank you. 
One of the elements discussed in the updating of the Salem Comprehensive comprehensive plan is complete neighborhoods. Can you explain, describe that? Uh, a complete neighborhood should be a neighborhood where everything that you need can be found in walking distance from where you live. So we shouldn't have to be, uh, say for example, I live in Northeast Salem um, and here in Ward 5, we don't have a really big a uh, store that has lower cost groceries, such as a Winco. Um, so uh, it'd be like all neighborhoods should have a good low cost grocery store. We should be able to buy all of our basic needs and we should be able to walk to places um, to find our basic needs. And we shouldn't have to drive to South Salem. Thank you. Uh, assuming that there may, there may be cuts in revenue and increases in needs, and you've described some of those, tell us your financial priorities for the city budget. Um, I would prioritize the needs of the working class and poor. And so what the working class and poor people need is better social safety nets. Um, privileged folks don't always realize that um, these Social safety nets are lifesavers for uh, economically disadvantaged folks who don't have um, family or friends that can help to bail them out in times of crisis or times when, you know, the money is lean. Um, and so that um, expanding social safety nets would be one of my main focuses. And then um, beyond that, uh, helping to solve the, the priceless, the, the homeless issue um, and um, funding for uh, climate challenges and environmental challenges and getting us ready for the next crisis because clearly this crisis has shown us that we are not ready. Let's turn to traffic. What are some of your ideas about congestion and the defeat of the Salem River crossing proposal? Um, well, I was never a fan of the third bridge idea um, because it's been proven that adding more roads just puts more cars on the road and that defeats um, the purpose or that defeats our, our ability to um, solve homeless or Christ, uh, sorry, climate change. Um, so to meet our climate crisis, we need to get cars off the road. We cannot rely on single vehicles. We need to expand public transportation. We need to expand the, the infrastructure for people to get around town without driving their own vehicle. Um, and so that can look like a, lots of different things. Maybe we um, increased, uh, will increase the amount of uh, buses on the road. Maybe we can get some light rail going between communities um, so that we don't have this congestion that is coming um, through where people were wanting to put the third bridge. Um, my other concerns with the third bridge was that it was coming into uh, Ward 5, into an area that's historically been um, has housed people that are of low income and people of color. Um, and so it's a racial justice issue as well. Um, and so I think that there are many um, opportunities to look outside of the, the traditional paradigm of just building more roads to accommodate more cars and, and solve our traffic uh, crises. Uh, we can see from European company or Euro European countries that um, it, uh, having great transportation is possible if we could just move away from our um, love, I guess, of uh, single passenger vehicles. Let's turn to uh, agricultural lands. Can you uh, talk about how they can be protected while also addressing uh, population growth? Um, our agricultural lands are actually really important right now, and we need to have a community conversation about how we do agriculture. 
Um, if we want to meet the challenges of rising population and at the same time meet the challenges of being able to uh, with, uh, remove carbon from our atmosphere, we are going to have to transition away from uh, agriculture that is uh, basically fueled by fossil fuels. All of our agriculture requires an enormous amount of fossil fuels to do. Um, and there are many other methods, um, such as agroforestry um, and agroecology, um, that we can uh, use our existing um, agricultural lands um, and just change the way that we do that. And so this would be growing different crops together, growing them with animals too, um, in such a way that we don't have to use tractors and other fossil fuel types of equipment to either do the planting um, or to do the harvesting. We would um, move to models where we do a lot more of the work by hand. Um, and this method has been shown to uh, uh, grow more food for people, um, provide much more food for people, and it also sequesters more carbon in the soil, and it helps to improve our soils without using fertilizers and pesticides and herbicides. And so I would advocate for transitioning away from the use of lots of chemicals and fossil fuels in our farming practices, because it's been shown that small farms that use a variety of agriculture or ag uh, um, agroecology or, or agro um, forestry uh, practices um, make more food. They produce more food. Well, let's finish up with uh, one last question. And uh, let's talk about um, uh, what your vision is about the vitality of the downtown area. I would like to see more community spaces downtown. I feel like the downtown focus has really become all about making money instead of being about community. And I think that, that there should be a mixture of both. Not all of us are um, privileged enough to be able to hang out downtown um, because we just don't have enough money to spend at all of the businesses, which are the only places to spend any time downtown. So I would advocate that we in, um, increase um, the community spaces, places where people can just meet up um, or they can prepare a meal. So say it's got a kitchen and a bathroom so that people can have, um, you know, come and use the restrooms without having to pay. Um, that's one of my biggest gripes about downtown is that you have to go somewhere and buy something if you need to use the restroom. Um, um, and I think that there is a way to m make the downtown more friendly to, to low income and, and poor folks um, that hasn't been looked at. I think that our downtown focus right now has been on attracting um, people with, um, with cash, with money to spend. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see a, a better mix of, you know, that, obviously. I like to go out to have lunch, too. Um, but it'd be nice to also go out downtown and meet up with friends and not have to buy a thing. Well, thank you, Holly Hawk, uh, Holly Oates Miller, for our interview today and for sharing your thoughts. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks to Capital Community Television for the extensive efforts made to make this program happen. And thanks to you, the public, for watching in order to become an informed voter. If you have recently moved or need to register to vote, you have until April 28th to do so. Ballots will be mailed out beginning April 29th. Remember to vote because your vote does count.